Intuitive Machines aim to become the next private company to land on the moon, and the third attempt overall so far in 2024. It might also be the most punk rock landing ever. Why? Stick around, and let's find out. Welcome to UK Space News, I'm Tom June, and before we go on, if you want to stay up to date with the latest goings on from the UK space industry and beyond, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. You can also follow me on X and support the channel on Patreon. Now, on to the news. Intuitive Machines are attempting the third lunar landing of the year, and it's not even March yet. Of course, we've already had Japan's Slim make it to the lunar surface, albeit with a faceplant instead of a belly flop, and Astrobotics Peregrine 1 suffered a fuel leak which prevented it landing altogether, though the science payloads on that spacecraft all performed well and returned scientific data, including that Open University designed Ion Trap Mass Spectrometer. Now though, it's the turn of Intuitive Machine's Nova C Odysseus, or Odi spacecraft to have a go. They're aiming for the Malapert A crater near the lunar south pole, and unlike Slim, will be landing in the conventional manner. You know, with landing legs. If successful, it will become the first American spacecraft to touch down on the moon since Apollo 17, way back in 1972. IM-1, as it's called, launched on board a SpaceX Falcon 9 at just after 6am UTC on Thursday 15th of February from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, following a scrub the previous day due to off-nominal methane temperatures prior to loading. The booster for this flight was 1080 on its 18th flight since 2020. Following another flawless flight, Nova C was successfully deployed into translunar injection around 48 minutes after takeoff. From this point, a series of commissioning tasks got underway to reorientate the spacecraft, ensuring the solar cells face the sun and equipment on board receives adequate power, as well as sending signals back to Mission HQ. Odysseus, unlike Slim, is taking a direct ascent approach to the moon, travelling for four days and then carrying out a series of descent burns to land on the lunar surface. It's all sounding very Apollo-style so far. Odysseus is designed to operate for only seven days, as it's another lander powered by photovoltaic solar panels and batteries. But if all goes well, then this will become the first of NASA's commercial lunar payload services missions to land and prove that this concept of having private companies carry out lunar cargo missions on their behalf as part of Project Artemis will in fact work. Much like we have with private missions to the ISS, but landing on the moon is, as we know, always that little bit trickier than actually getting there. Odysseus will also aim to become the first lander to do so with a cryogenic propellant-based propulsion system, utilising methalox. This is pretty crazy, as those propellants have to be loaded onto the spacecraft just 45 minutes before liftoff, and actually forcing SpaceX to make changes to their processes and infrastructure to accommodate it, compared to most usual payloads. Obviously, the other thing we have to contend with here is boil-off, so this really is a proof of concept all round. On board Odysseus is a suite of scientific payloads from NASA, as well as commercial ones, including a new temperature-resistant cloth developed by Columbia Sportswear, 125 Tiny Moon sculptures sold via NFT, and even a camera that will deploy 100 feet above the surface to capture a third-person view of Odi as it lands. But, I hear you ask, what does all this have to do with the UK, given this is a UK Space News channel? Well, as it happens, the UK-based branch of Canadian company MDA, famous for their Canada Arm, which was on the Space Shuttle, and Canada Arm 2 on the ISS, have provided the landing sensors for the spacecraft. These sensor packages are based on laser technology, or LIDAR. The first is called LEA, or LiDAR for Extraterrestrial Imaging Applications, and it uses LiDAR to create 3D maps of surrounding features. It was designed and developed by MDA Harwell in England, and back in 2022, they were awarded a government grant of £421,000 to finish qualification on the device. Basically, it works by bouncing high-intensity focused light beams 
also known as laser beams, onto the surface of the Moon, they can create the most accurate, real-time 3D map of the lunar surface, allowing the spacecraft to navigate tricky terrain and choose the safest landing site. LiDAR uses ultraviolet, visible or near-infrared light to image objects. It can target a wide range of materials from non-metallic objects to rocks and even single molecules by focusing a narrow laser beam and then measuring the time it takes for the light to return to a receiving sensor, giving an accurate measure of distance to the object. It can map physical features with very high resolutions, creating highly detailed real-time images in the process. This is particularly useful for lunar landings, as even the most detailed altitude-based photography can only provide so much information about surface features. If you recall the Apollo 11 landing, it wasn't until Eagle was actually very close to the surface of the Sea of Tranquility that it became apparent that they were about to land in a boulder field, and Neil Armstrong had to manually pilot the LEM to a safer patch of ground. MDA have also provided their flare package for use on flatter, less risky ground. This is a full wave laser rangefinder, and flare combines a pulsed laser, high quality free space optics, a high speed detector, and matching electronics. Together with a time of flight measurement system, flare can measure range to targets many kilometers away. And it was actually originally designed for use in CubeSats, but it has multiple applications, including spacecraft docking and lunar landing. The neat thing is that MDA have previous successful experience in developing LiDAR sensors for spacecraft, having provided a laser altimeter for NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission to asteroid Bennu, which of course safely returned to the Earth in 2023 with the first asteroid samples ever collected and returned. Not only MDA are involved here, as AAC Clyde Space, based in Glasgow, have provided the power systems with their Starbuck Mini Power Conditioning and Distribution Unit, or PCDU, for the lander. Power systems perform a number of vital tasks on the spacecraft, such as maximizing power from solar panels, converting it to useful voltages to power electronics and charge the batteries, as well as distributing power to all systems as needed. So, all round, yeah, we actually have a couple of companies from the UK taking part in this international effort to get to the moon again. But, I did say that this is the most punk rock lunar landing ever. Now, if there's two things in the world that I love, it's punk rock and space rocks. I love it that much that I created a range of merchandise, which you can find alongside my other collections, available via my merch store. Check out tomjune.com and follow the link, or go to the one in the description. Anyway, enough of that shameless plug. You see, one of the lead designers of Odysseus, this whole mission, and the person responsible for naming this spacecraft as such, is none other than Mario Romero, who also just so happens to be a fellow fan and member of fan group of my favourite band, Alkaline Trio. He's also a former US Navy SEAL and an aerospace engineer responsible for the assembly, integration and testing of Odysseus. So for me, this is an all-round awesome mission and I really do hope that it succeeds. We'll be keeping track of this mission throughout its flight until that lunar landing attempt in just a few days time. So do again, make sure that you're following with me and Intuitive Machines on X so that you can keep up to date with all the latest news. A massive thank you as ever goes to my amazing Patreon supporters who make these videos happen. And if you want to consider supporting the channel, then head to the link in the description below or through tomjune.com. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Tom June, and I'll see you next time.